ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਟੁਡੇ ਵੀ ਗੋਟ ਥਿਸ ਨਿਊ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਕਾਲਡ ਦਾ ਵਰਲਡ ਵਿਊ ਇਨ ਥਿਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਵੀਲ ਬੀ ਟੋਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਾ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਅਰਾਉਂਡ ਦਾ ਵਰਲਡ ਐਂਡ ਵੀਲ ਕੀਪ ਗਿਵਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਦਾ ਅਪਡੇਟਸ ਮਾਈ ਸੈਲਫ ਆਮ ਅ ਮੇਕਰ ਐਂਡ ਲੇਡੀਜ਼ ਸਿੰਗ ਵੈਰੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਊਡਲੀ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਹੇਅਰ ਟੂ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊ ਯੂ نو ਲੋਰਡ ਸਿੰਗ ਆਨਰੇਬਲ ਲੋਰਡ ਸਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਹਿਸ ਹਾਊਸ ਐਂਡ ਐਸ ਯੂ ਆਲ ਵੀ ਆਲ ਨੋ that you know in the house of lords nobody can walk in uh, with anything they all walk in uncovered he- heads and uh, i was there when that was very very proud moment when lord singh walked in with turban and that was very very we, we were all very proud moment for all six here that sadi sikhi roop was gone with turban into lords of uh, house of lords and uh, today we are here uh, that you know the, uh, the uh, uh, lord saying house of lords debate on national security situation on 19th of april can you just please explain what happened here? yes there was a debate um, it was particularly because of the events in syria but a general debate on the security situation around the world i listened to the debate i was one of the last speakers and each time they were suggesting the the house of lords is full of retired generals field marshals um uh, top diplomats and they're all suggesting the world is in a mess poor us um what can we do for our security and everyone else is to blame except us now i've been listening to that sort of thing for some time and it really got to me because if we look at the world situation the uh, this country america russia they're all complicit in the uh, all the different conflicts in the world today for example at the start of the uh, a, a century ago we saw the end of conflict in the first world war we're remembering that and the millions of lives lost that was repeated um within a, a, a couple of uh, decades later when um, we had the second world war after the carnage of the second world war all the victors got together and say this must not be repeated and the united nations was formed and there was a uni- universal declaration of human yeah. rights and that declaration of human rights almost echoed sikh teachings that we are all one family everyone's right must be respected and to avoid conflict and future conflict we must respect the rights of all people can you explain what's in the universal declaration of uh, it, human it rights? was part of the charter and the first and it gives different freedoms for like religion and belief and other things but the first the preamble to the charter talks about the rights of all people to their uh, private life dignity freedom of worship and so on and they say that we must respect these rights if we are to avoid future conflict then what happened was almost immediately afterwards the great powers who formulated the declaration of human rights said now we've done that now let's go back to what we were doing in the 19th and 20th century yeah. and um, so that was set aside we had a security council where in a world where all countries are equal five nations said that we're a bit more equal than others and we've got the right to interfere and suggest uh, what to do no is in in the uh, declaration uh, i think it was said that uh, we mustn't fight but when all means yeah. fail uh, yeah. we then we can t- uh, pick up the sword no, and no. this it's, really image mirrors yeah. the sikh teachings it's come 300 years or more than 300 year, years later than mm-hmm. sikh teachings right. sikh yeah. teaching says we do not get into conflict Undue. except yeah. as a last resort mm. to um, put evil right and that is That's echoed exactly here the yes yeah. yes it could have been taken straight from sikh teachings mm. but what has happened since is that the great powers have set that aside and 
they themselves have fueled the conflict around the world. 80%, more than 80% of all the arms sale that are used for killing in different countries, and that's innocent men, women and children, are sold by members of the so-called Security Council. Now that is shameful, and that is what I spoke about uh, last Thursday, that drawing attention to this. And also there's a lot of moral hip hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Assad was blamed for the chemical attack. Mm -hmm. It might have been him. It could have been any of those people. He has virtual control of the whole country. Why should he suddenly decide to launch chemical weapons to um, get the world across with it? Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit about what is happening in Syria? What is this war about? Uh, was it, we all understand why Yes, so much killing, so yeah. much yes. Yeah. Syria was originally under the French, then it had uh, independence, and then there was a family, the uh, Assads, who, um, who were Alawites by religion. That is something slightly different from mainstream Islam. So they are neither Shia nor Sunni. And for some years, there was stability in the country. Um, Assad was a guest of honor at 10 Downing Street with his wife. Um, a few years before I was introduced into the House Lords, I was invited to meet him and shake hands. Mm -hmm. um, he was then a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. Today, he's an animal, mm -hmm. a butcher. And we, we see what we What's do. Yeah. What we do is we divide the world mm -hmm. into two lots. Mm -hmm. This is just going back to the school playground. Our friends, those who are not our friends, and those who are uh, our enemies. Mm -hmm. And that is the way the world is divided these, these days, when we have a friendly nation mm -hmm. and it is um, causing suffering in any part of the world. Today there was a question about the um, uh, suffering in Gaza, and of course um, Israel's a friendly nation, so the minister couldn't say anything about mm -hmm. Israel. They said, we're keeping a close watch on the situation. Yeah. Now, if it was a smaller country that was in the other camp, we will send in forces, we'll do this. Yeah. It's a different way of looking at things. A friendly country is a, uh, one of our allies. A country we don't like is called a regime. This is the way... Um, yes. we so so what happened with Syria, I think uh, some, one, some time ago, lots and lots of Shias came in from Iran. No, 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 no. no. So what exactly is the yeah. conflict? No, what happened is there was some stability there. Mm -hmm. Then there was the conflict in Iran, sorry, in Iraq, the war in Iraq in which America yeah. and other countries mm -hmm. participated. There was that war there, and it was the... Uh, the Sunni refugees from that war were allowed to come into Syria. And they came, about a million refugees were taken in by Syria. And what do they do? They oppose the government. Now we're in charge, we want to be in charge. So a civil war starts. Yeah. Right, so right, it, yeah. it, it is yeah. as bad as that. that that's and then is, yeah. the extremist Muslims, ISIS, the extreme Muslims who want a Muslim caliphate everywhere, more or less, they say that we're going to come in. Now, the civil war is getting bigger. Then um, Britain and America start coming in a little bit, America more than Britain. And what happens next? Russia comes in that we will be on the side of Assad. And all it is, is Syria is an important country in the Middle East, strategically to everyone. There's oil in the region and um, trade and so on. So Russia comes in, then um, uh, Turkey, uh, Israel has come in, Saudi Arabia is involved, Iran is involved. They've got all these different country, countries involved, and it is just a terrible mess. In the end, it will have to be solved by negotiation, but um, it, all, our, all the countries are making it harder and harder by being 
extremely um, nasty about each other. What's the view of our government, our British government? What are they doing about it? Uh, the British government were first um, considering going into the war uh, on this, against Assad, and um, there was a vote in Parliament and uh, in the Lords, and it was decided, no, that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So they didn't, but they have been helping America in, in the war. Mm -hmm. And now they, also, they keep saying that there can be no peace in Syria unless we topple Assad and remove uh, 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 Assad. We've got to remove Assad yeah. to get any peace. Yeah. At the same time, we want a negotiated settlement. You can't have both. So you've got to look at everything. What the whole thing shows is that the foreign policy of the major nations is a total selfish mess. Yes. They are in it for themselves. They don't care about the suffering. They pretend yeah. uh, poor little children um, suffering from Assad's attack. And what are they doing meanwhile? Three countries went in to launch missile attacks against Assad. Which, the which, three countries which? were Britain, France, and the United States. Yeah. Now, in the last few weeks, each of those countries have boasted billion-dollar arms deals oh. with Saudi Arabia. We've uh, increased our earnings. Look at this. This is good for trade, good for our standard of living, selling arms to Saudi Arabia, who immediately use them to decimate the uh, Hutu rebels in Sudan. Yeah. So it, it is, while we're saying, poor them, this is what we're helping to yeah. do. It, it is so hypocritical. What's happening in Yemen as well? Something... Yeah, there's a conflict in Yemen which Saudi Arabia is supporting the major faction, the government faction. There's a rebellion against uh, them which Iran is supporting. And uh, the government plus Sudan are decimating the opposition. So can I just read a little bit from your speech that yeah. you gave in the House of Lords? It says, an important aspect of strategic action is trade. It is important, but trade should never trump human rights. I was appalled when the minister openly said that when we talk trade with China, we should not raise issues of human rights. So can you tell us a little bit what you mean by that, that people ignoring human rights? And uh, oh, no, It was actually said when... Um, Michael Fallon, so Michael Fallon, he was then Trade Secretary, this is about five, four or five years ago. He, um, the Chinese delegation came to this country for trade, and he said that when we talk trade, we should be silent about human rights, because we don't want to upset the Chinese because we want our trade. It, it is so um, uh, blatant. Mm -hmm. And more recently, the new ruler of um, uh, Saudi Arabia came to this country for another billion dollar uh, pound uh, arms deal. And again, um, the government officials were saying we should keep silent about trade because that might um, imperil the contract. Yeah. So it, it is very, very obvious. Now, I, I think six have a responsibility here. We've got all the answers. Mm -hmm. And the key one is that in the West, in all these countries, what has happened is religion had a big influence everywhere. Mm -hmm. Then religion became ritual superstition and killing each other. And it was pushed to the side. Now, in all these countries, religion is considered something separate from ordinary life. You can do it in the privacy of your own homes, but you can't um, use religion in everyday life. Now, that is contrary to our Sikh teaching. Sikhism teaches miri piri, that we must look to the spiritual and the um, um, secular dimensions at the same time. We must make sure that any secular uh, decisions are taken with a spiritual input. Yeah. Now, that, that makes even, sense. Yeah. Even, yeah. even olden days, always, uh, you know, politics always relied on religion. Yeah. You must have. 
religion. No, the two Not have been pushed religion, aside. We can, no, in, 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 in Parliament, what we do is we start the day mm -hmm. with saying exactly that, may uh, the Lord guide us in making our decisions. Mm -hmm. Then, after the five minutes of prayers, we push that to one side and then get on with sordid talk of trade and uh, revenge attacks and so on. Yeah, it seems to trade seems to be the main target, main so uh, issue, money. main thing that they got to follow. I remember in 1984, uh, you used to meet the minister and you would come back the same th with the same thing. They won't do anything for Sikhs because they got... Yeah, I went to see the uh, home... Uh, I was on a committee called the Home Secretary's Advisory Committee and I was appalled and um, uh, really stunned by the suffering of Sikhs in India. And I went to see David Waddington, who was the minister uh, uh, at the Home Office, to say that what is the British government doing about it? And he listened to what I said and then responded with something that I can never forget. He said, in the jet, we know exactly what's going on, but we're walking on a tightrope. We've already lost one important contract with India, mm -hmm. the um, helicopter mm -hmm. contract. And um, so what can we do? It seems so sad, isn't it? Yeah. It, it is and, sad and, and sickening. Uh, look at you, the history we say, you know, in India, Mughal, huge Mughal rule. How did they lose? Because they, they were not practicing the religion. Mm -hmm. the, 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 but this is really sad. And See, but, but what's, when we look at it, what is going to be the solution? Yeah, it keeps on trade, trade. And I've seen many of the letters that other lords have written to you, uh, commending that uh, you have the guts and you have the principles and you stood up and well said and nobody has had the strength to say these truths. And then there was one from one of our Sikh friends saying, well, what do you do? They have to have money to do the trade. Yeah, the, but he, you could see he was being sarcastic or ironic, but he wasn't. He was actually I thought he was a sarcastic saying, ah, it's the money, trade is the money. But see, you can, we, we Sikhs, we have Kirthkaro as well, mm. as the Guru said. And in Kirthkaro, we have principles. The yeah. Guru's laid down principles. Yeah, level, can't we yeah. do that straight in a way? Yeah. That where there are human rights issues, we won't do trade with them, and those countries will have to reform themselves. Yeah. For example, China, India, all these countries, they will have to do something because they have to import and export. Why can't we look at a bit wider and rather say, this trade. Why not wider? If we want to, if you don't look at the human rights, if your people are suffering, then we won't do trade with you. And after a little while, they'll have to. See, mo work? Most people yeah. would accept a lower standard of living if um, it meant that they weren't participating in selling arms and so on. Now, they would accept that. The politicians don't. They want to show that we can get more money, our government can do better than the last government and so on. It is the politicians that are causing the mess. So what is the solution then? The politicians got to learn. Mm -hmm. People like you keep speaking. We, no, we rely on that, isn't it? I, 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 think, I think it is not just people like me. In all walks of life, we have an opportunity to do something to move the world into a better direction. We um, talk of uh, three dimensions, nam japna kid karna one chakna, that we talk about uh, the uh, manmuk and gurmuk people. Now, we, it is the responsibility of everyone, Sikhs and non-Sikhs, to move the world into a more gurmuk direction. That should be the aim of life. Now, what saddens me is Sikhs have all the answers, but we don't appreciate them. We go on ourselves to argue about trivialities. It is like, uh, I've used the analogy before, that if you have a beautiful picture a painting on a wall in the home. You grow up with it from childhood and look at it, and then it gets boring. And you can say that um, people will say, oh, this is boring. Let's take it to the jumble sale mm. and get something new and modern. Um, then a friend comes in, looks at the painting, and says, that is a masterpiece. It's worth 
<laughs> tens and perhaps a hundred thousand. It is worth a lot of money. It, when we as Sikhs don't appreciate the picture other that is people, Sikhism, people, it is other people, people. Yeah, that I appreciate. Really because yeah. whenever I speak yeah. anywhere, on the radio or anywhere, mm-hmm. it is always non-Sikhs that are astounded at the importance of these teachings. They are uh, say that these should be universal teachings. Mm-hmm. We ourselves don't fully appreciate them. Mm-hmm. Some want to argue that six should be a protected species. We should have a little Khalistan and look after ourselves. Mm-hmm. Sikhism is a religion meant for the world, and we should do our best, not by any sort of pressure, but by force of reason to show the strength of those teachings and um, use them to solve some of the difficulties. Now, since last Thursday, I've had many people in the Lords coming to me and saying, we must do something on those lines. We must look at the wider picture, not just our own um, selfish interests. Now, they say, one of the reasons given by the government, by Theresa May, for going in, is that um, entering into this conflict is in our strategic interests. That is a narrow way of looking at it. And I say, yes, it is. It's in Britain's strategic interest. Look at, uh, look at it from a Russian point of view. If they can get a foothold there, it's in their strategic interest. If Saudi Arabia or Israel or Iran can get a full foothold, it's in the st- their strategic interest. So this is a selfish look. We sh- what we need to do has a problem here. What can we all do to help solve it? Yeah. Not just looking at, at our own interest. It's looking at their own interest while the poor, innocent people, yeah. Yeah. women, yeah. men, Small children, children yeah. are being... And then the uh, ultimate irony is around... Um, the weekend and particularly at Christmas time, we get little envelopes pushed through the door, save and give three pounds and help a suffering person in Syria. Mm-hmm. Who causes the mess in the first place? This selfish politics. Selfish politics that the gurus taught us to resist and fight against. Mm-hmm. But are we saying anything? We talk, six talk about everything else except helping to put the world to rights. Here you were saying that in Syria that um, there was a problem anywhere. Can I just read a little sentence uh, from your uh, speech? Are we really saying that it is morally okay to kill and maim the people of Syria with bullets, bombs and missiles, but somehow morally wrong to do so with chemical weapons? I think that our Prime Minister was more honest but wrong when a justification when in ju- as justification she said that the action was in britain's na- national interest you talked about the national interest is the chemical war is any worse uh, well that, that is an important thing because um, to the someone on the receiving end of a chemical attack and a weapons attack if the chemical we- weapons attack if someone survives they will have some disability or may have nothing in the end after treatment. But if someone um, is in a weapons attack and has limbs blown off or sees their families and friends decimated, for the people on the receiving end of that sort of treatment, I I don't think we should distinguish on morally is this better or that better. They are both both awful and they both should be outlawed. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a little bit heartened to hear that s- some lords who heard this and came to you and talk about that we must do something about it. Uh, see, I perhaps that's how little drops and little so- seeds being sown, and perhaps that that will carry on. And how, what's your next step? How you feel you can expand it even further? I think I'll do my. Of course, I'll do my bit. But every Sikh can do something. Um, to push us towards the Guru's teaching and to help others move towards those sort, sort of teachings without saying you should be Sikhs. No, it's Sikh values that we really want to encourage. They should be there everywhere. There's a line of a, um, a Christian hymn that says, you, uh, no, of a uh, 
poem that says, you cannot choose your battlefields, God does that for you, but you can plant a standard where another standard for you. It means we can all uh, do something. That's right. See, I, I am a member of some groups, WhatsApp groups, you know, and I feel they just sit there and talk and talk and talk. It's, a, it's very easy, but they do nothing beyond that talk. Mm. It doesn't go wider, stays within the group. It's, it's, it's I think, it's what they call, the Americans call it, uh, walking, walking the talk. Walking the talk. Yeah. That, that's yeah. the important bit. And that's, uh, I think that's the message perhaps we can take yeah. from your interview today, yeah. that uh, we should be looking at everyone. Everyone has a responsibility uh, to do something. I learned a lot. The message what we got here, from Lord Singh is that you know that Sikhism is the solution which I always say and I believe strongly that we have all the solution to the world's problem in Sikhism and even our Prime Minister she admitted many times she mentioned in her uh, in her speeches that Sikhism has something to give to the world so responsibility we all have and it is about time we should we let people know and practice Sikhism ourselves and let people. And thank you, Lord Singh, for your care. Thank you. Bye, Guruji. Bye, Guruji.